the notion that that we're fat cats. The the shareholders are fat cats and have been overly rewarded. We haven't seen this. That's please class warfare. CNBC host Jim Cramer is crapping his pants over the United Auto Workers president, Sean Fain, and the potential that there may be a strike coming up. So in this video, I have several clips to get to of Jim Cramer and of the UAW president, who is very terrifying, according to Jim Cramer. Let's see how terrifying he is later on. But th this is just <laughs> this whole segment. Look, again, understanding the framing here, this is the business network CNBC. So they're, of course, going to be on the side of giant automakers. But just the level of rhetoric here uh, and... You're really going to laugh once I show you Sean Fain, who seems like a nice guy to me. But uh, because of the way Jim Cramer talks up and how, how terrifying this union president is. So let's first get to this clip of uh, Jim Cramer on CNBC. I want you to compare the labor negotiations here to the ones in auto, where I think there's going to be a strike and I think it's going to be horrible. You're making that call September today? 14. I think they're going to strike. Uh, this the. Uh, Sean Fain, the guy who runs the UAW, I find him frightening. Sean, who is just talking about capitalism and the nature of capitalism and how it's really hurt workers. This is very Walter Ruther uh, language. It's a, uh, it, it's the kind of language that when we when we had in this country, uh, we'll take you down if you don't play ball. That's the language I'm hearing from the UAW. Yep. And look, I mean, it's the kind of language where you just say, you know what, we should have built all our EVs in Mexico. It's that bad. So CNBC host Jim Cramer here arguing that these automakers should be destroying American jobs because they're asking for fair pay. Because they see their employers making billions in profit. I'm going to get some specifics here in a minute. And they figure, hey, we're making these cars. Why aren't we seeing any benefits here? Why are the executives making as much money as they are? And my God, I'm going to get to an example in a bit here that is going to blow your mind from uh, when I get to the, the Sean Fain clip. But this is just, I'll show you what, what they're asking for in a bit here. But the like all this rhetoric from Jim Cramer about how frightening this, uh, he, just, he calls <laughs> the UA president, UAW president frightening says, talking about how capitalism has hurt workers. Yes, these are facts. He is discussing facts. Uh, quote, it's the kind of language where if you don't play ball, we'll take you down. What do these automakers do? They underpay their workers. How is that not taking their workers down? How is that not lowering the standard of living for their workers? Why is that okay? But it's not okay to ask for what they deserve. It isn't okay for these workers to actually get paid what they deserve based on how much uh, money th these companies are making. So let's get to some of that right here. So More Perfect Union, who, by the way, also shared this uh, these clips. Right here, what Kramer didn't say, the big three car makers have made $250 billion in North American profits the past 10 years, while the majority of auto workers are now lower tier with no retirement health care and lower wages. CEO pay is up 40% in the last four years. Auto worker wages are up 6%. Why is that okay? How is that not, you know, if you don't play ball, we'll take you down? These CEOs taking down their employees, making this much more money. Meanwhile, the workers are the reason they're able to make that kind of money. So specifics here that were brought up as well by um, the union president uh, in his video that I'll get to. But GM earnings have soared. Uh, Detroit News here, Stellantis post record 12.1 billion net profit in first half of 2023. And uh, Ford's uh, second quarter profit surges on strong revenue earnings per share, top estimates. So they're making billions of dollars in profit. And Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, <laughs> random ad. Uh, and it's not being shared by, by the workers. So let me get to. The uh, first clip here from, this is the very frightening, very scary, Sean Fain, the uh, United Auto Workers president, on a recent call, this is from yesterday, or sorry, two days ago, and he's discussing some of this. Instead of rewarding the workers who spent long hours wrecking their bodies on the line to make these profits possible, the big three have funneled billions into stock buyback schemes 
that artificially inflate the value of company shares and further enrich company executives and the top 1%. That's billions of dollars that have been robbed from the workers who made these profits possible. General Motors CEO Mary Barra made $29 million last year, yet a newly hired battery worker at Altium Cells in Lordstown, Ohio, is making $16.50 an hour. That means a newly hired Altium worker would have to work full-time for 16 years to earn what Mary Barra makes in a single week. Let me repeat that again. A new worker at Altium Battery has to work 16 years to make one week of a CEO salary. 16 years of work to equal one week of CEO pay. In what world does that make any sense? Yet somehow, Sean Fain fighting for his workers, that's frightening. Showcasing the obvious disparity here. That's, this is scary stuff. <laughs> Like, what, what, what is frightening about this? I mean, I, frightening maybe to Jim Cramer, uh, Cramer and, you know, uh, massive corporations who can't stand workers fighting for their rights. But to the average person, Sean Fain is just being rational. He's just fighting for his workers. He's doing what he should be doing. And the workers there should be proud of him for fighting for that. And, I, and I'm going to get to you later on, by the way, more specifics around what they're fighting for and how not frightening it is just you know, again, they're asking for what they deserve. But let's get to another clip here from uh, Jim Cramer, who has, has more to say. <laughs> but again, this is more rhetoric about how frightening Sean Fain is. And then I'll get to more from uh, Sean Fain as well. And, and then the notion that that we're fat cats, the, the shareholders are fat cats and have been overly rewarded. We haven't seen this. That's please class warfare. And it's very shocking to hear class Although warfare. I remember a Jim Cramer a while ago who lamented the shift b b from capital to labor. I'm sorry, from, from labor, labor to, to capital, capital over the last 30 years. Well, I, I always felt that the middle class benefited from unions. I've been a union member, twice union member, and I always felt that you could work together and everybody would do well. Uh, I never felt that I, we had to destroy the people that we were fighting. Who's destroying what? I love this part because I'm not sure Kramer really expected the other host there to bring up that Jim Kramer, I guess in the past, has talked about the importance of unions. I'm not sure in what context that was around because he's always been a very pro-business individual. But he goes on to say how he was in two different unions. So he, I guess essentially he's a class trader is what it sounds like. And now that you have a union here, a, a union president actually fighting for the workers. And also, there are other par parts of this, um, of Sean Fain's uh, discussion with uh, his, his membership here, where he's discussing how this is not a top-down approach, that he's, they are specifically only agreeing to whatever their members agree to. So this isn't, you know, the president rules above all, which I think maybe is what Jim Cramer is annoyed by, that this union president, Sean Fain, is actually representing the interests of all of his workers. Let me get to a, another clip here from Sean Fain discussing what uh, they're asking for. <clears throat> While big three executives have used those extreme profits to pump up their pay, our members have fallen further and further behind. This chart compares what our contracts provided in 2007 compared to what they provide today. As you can see here, an auto worker starting at a big three company in 2007 had a higher starting wage than an auto worker starting in 2023. And that's without taking inflation into account. If the 2007 starting rate had kept up with inflation, newly hired big three employees would be making $28.68 in today's wages. That's more than $10 an hour higher than the current rate. That's almost $21,000 more per year. That's a life-changing amount of money that our members have been robbed of. So in a second here, I'll get to specifics around what they're asking for, and I'll get to another Jim Cramer clip where this is, I guess, where he goes the most extreme. So that in a minute here. But Sean Fain showing the clear disparity between where they are right now and where they would have been if wages have kept up with inflation, and they haven't. So again, what they're asking for now is just what they're owed what they deserve. But 
let's get to quick specifics on that before I get to uh, that clip. The next clip, um, members demand. So this is just one slide there. If you go through the, it's like an hour video. He, he breaks it all down, but the right to strike over plant closures, working family protection program and abuse of temporary workers, which is an important point here. He really is standing up for all their workers. So temp workers included more paid time off to be with families. And he gets to a really great, he makes a really great point in the last clip that I'll get to uh, in a bit. And then significantly increase retiree pay. So, and of course, in addition to, you know, higher wages, this is basic stuff that is apparently incredibly frightening to uh, Jim Cramer. Let me get to now the last clip from Cramer, where again, this is where he goes the hardest against how frightening Sean Fain is. This man studied Trotsky. I got to tell you, studied Trotsky before pre-ice picking era. You think you think some of the weakness this morning is about reading? I, I mean, I, honestly, over, I'm reading the guy. Over Fitch. Walter Ruther now. Walter Ruther seems like he's a, a man of peace. Uh, it, it is. I I have to tell you that if this guy, if Sean Fain, who is the UAW head, if he gets his way, you can short every single auto company until the cows come home. I took seven courses on communism at Harvard because I was in a particularly bad period at Harvard. I, there should be an eighth course, Sean Fain, and what he had to do with Engels. It was Marx and Engels and Fain. Okay, this is where we get to how this clearly is a performance. Marx, Engels, Fain. Come on, come on, buddy. <laughs> what are you doing here? Go going this going this extreme makes me think, who's paying him under the table? I'm sure he has in his, his own investments in these automakers. And he has these personal relationships with these executives. But it seems like there's a little more going on here. When you're specifically targeting Sean Fain and this union that is not going above and beyond what any other union really is. Not, not to talk down with Sean Fain here. I think he's doing a great job. But it's not like, you know, he's not calling to physically destroy these these <laughs> these automakers. He's not calling to, you know, trash the place. He's asking for what their workers deserve. And Kramer is going wild over nothing. Last clip here. And this is, I think, a, a great clip because this gets to the heart of what it is to be a worker and what it is to be really a human, a person. This is, uh, again, from Sean Fain during his uh, live stream a couple days ago. You know, years ago, I was part of a small group at my church that read a book called One Month to Live by Carrie and Chris Shook. And part of their calling as ministers, you know, the authors ministered to many people in the final days of their lives. And what they found was, you know, very few people when they look back and when they visited them at the end of their lives, wish they had spent more time at work. Instead, most people had a lot of regrets about all the things they wanted to do, but never did or never got to do or never had the time to do. The greatest resource in this world is a human being's time because each of us is only given a finite, precious amount. And that's what wages are all about, no matter what type of work somebody does. You're being paid for your time. And that should be the focus of everything going forward, no matter what work somebody does. So it's good to see Sean Fain here find time for his church in between his seances with Angles and Marx. But on a serious note, I think he makes a great point here. This, who, who on you know their deathbed is thinking about that they should have worked more? <laughs> like we work in this current society, how society currently operates. We work to live. Most of us work to live. Hopefully we also can, you know, enjoy what we do to a certain degree, but we work to live. We have to make money. We have to survive. Why not in that situation, when you have the ability to fight for your workers, why not try and give your workers as much time as possible with their families, have the ability to lead a healthy, happy life that isn't just about how much they're working. So it's great to have a union president with that sort of outlook, someone here who is truly, I believe, fighting for his workers. And I think when you are frightening Jim Cramer to the degree that you are frightening him, it means you're doing a great job.